In this video, we're going to dive deep into the most popular pile types, from driven piles and screw piles to board piles and even micro piles. We're going to investigate the pros and cons of each type of pile, learn the installation process, and how to decide what pile foundation to use in your project. But before we start, let's understand what a pile foundation is. A pile foundation is a type of deep foundation that provides support to structures by transferring loads from the structure to a deeper level within the earth. It consists of long slender columns or piles typically made of materials like concrete, steel or timber that are driven or installed into the ground. There are various types of pile foundations but basically I would classify them into two categories and three subcategories. The first two categories are displacement and non-displacement piles. So in simple words, if you're drilling a hole, taking out soil and replacing with concrete, that's a non-displacement pile. On the other hand, if the pile is pushing through the soil and displacing it laterally and compacting around, that's a displacement pile. And the three subcategories are related to their load bearing mechanisms, which are base bearing, shaft friction, and a combination of both. Essentially, base bearing piles get most of their strength from the bottom part of the pile, which sits on either rock, hard, or a dense soil. On the other hand, shaft friction piles get their strength mainly from the sides of the pile rubbing against the surrounding soil. And the third subcategory are piles that get their strength from a combination of side friction and base bearing. Now that you know what a pile foundation is, let's navigate the decision-making process. When do we choose pile foundations over other options? The first and most obvious factor is the soil bearing capacity. Footings must be founded on a material that satisfies the minimum bearing capacity nominated by the engineer. For instance, most residential projects require a minimum of 100 kPa bearing capacity. If the geotechnical report describes a weak top layer of soil with less than 100 kPa, you should start considering piles as the footing for the building. In this house we designed on the Gold Coast, for example, there was a 1.5 meters deep layer of uncontrolled fill underlay by another meter of loose sand and soft silty clay, which required three meters deep screw piles for the footings. The next case is for light structures subject to lateral and uplift forces. When structures face large upward or lateral forces like tall buildings, free roofs, carports, sheds, transmission towers, and even retaining walls, piles are an efficient way to ensure the stability of the system due to their friction capacity. You could possibly utilize the self-weight of shallow footings to resist the overturning and uplift forces, but in light structures, shallow footings can get massive depending on the intensity of the wind loads and the costs would outweigh the use of piles. They also play a crucial role in preventing the overload of existing structures by mitigating the pressure exerted by shallow footings. When a new structure is introduced, its footings can create additional loads that might adversely affect neighboring structures or utilities. And I'll give you some examples that you might relate to. The footings of a high-rise building in the city will surcharge the existing basement walls of the building next door. A pad footing next to an existing retaining wall will exert pressure on the retaining wall. The footings of a house will surcharge the walls of an existing pool previously installed on the site. The footings of a building will surcharge the council storm waters and sewer pipes running across the property. And that's when piles come into play. A deep footing will transmit the loads to the foundation through end bearing and prevent that extra load on the existing structure. If the water table is close to the ground surface, the process of construction of shallow footings can be tricky. Piling would avoid the mess of constant dewatering and ensuring a stable construction environment. And the last case of our list are footings on slopes. 
The lack of soil on the slope side of the footing will tend to reduce this stability if a shallow footing is used. I'm not saying you cannot use shallow footings in this case, but you could consider a pile foundation to avoid any problems. Not to mention landslide and unstable foundation problems, which ties back to our first point about bearing capacity and soil conditions. There is a case though that you must be very careful when using piles because if you don't, the consequences could be devastating. And I will disclose that information after we go over the most common pile foundation types. So let's proceed to understand how those piles are constructed and the pros and cons of each one of them. First type we will discuss are the board piles or board piers. They're high capacity drilled piers constructed by drilling a cylindrical hole of the required depth and subsequently filling it with concrete. They might or may not require a reinforcing cage and some board piles can be constructed with an enlarged base to help with bearing and uplift. Another type of drilled pier is the CFA continuous flight auger. They're similar to board piles. The difference is that CFAs have cutting blades that span the entire length of the drill shaft and a hollow tube that allows for the pumping of concrete as the auger is retracted from the hole. Unlike the board piers, the excavated soil is not removed progressively, but instead remains in the hole between the cutting blades. And the reinforcement cage is inserted into the still wet concrete. Pros. They eliminate the need for pile caps. Fewer piles can be used. No vibration or noise. Can go through boulders and be socketed into rock. High load capacity. Base can be enlarged for higher capacity. And they can form a composite pile with steel columns. Looking at the cons, they're not ideal for collapsible soils. They're not ideal in shallow water table zones. Bad weather conditions might make drilling and concreting difficult and disposal of soil from drilling. Attention structural engineers, mark your calendars for December 9th because we will be running our final workshop of 2023 and this time we will be talking about foundation engineering. Our structural engineer Jordan will be going over geotechnical reports, explain how he deals with class E extremely reactive sites, share practical on-site knowledge, build a spreadsheet to design board piers, and show how your decisions above ground impact on the design below ground. Spots are limited, don't miss out on this opportunity and I'll see you at the workshop. Next are the screw piles. Screw piles consist of circular steel hollow sections fitted with a single or double helix at the tip. Installation involves using a hydraulic excavator to screw four meters long sections of steel piles connected to each other into the ground. Diameters range from 76 millimeters to 273 millimeters and they're widely used in the construction industry in Australia especially in the residential market. Pros, no vibration or noise, speed of installation, low mobilization costs due to small and inexpensive equipment, ideal in shallow water table zones, no spoil to be removed from site, weather conditions don't affect installation, can be installed in confined spaces which makes them ideal for remedial works. Looking at the cons, not suitable for rock without pre-drilling, difficult installation in trash fill with concrete and other building material debris, load bearing capacity is limited. For example, a typical 76.1 millimeters with 300 millimeters helix can take approximately 100 kilonewtons in stiff soils. Buckling limits its capacity in very soft soils. Next are the driven piles. Driven piles are installed using impact or vibration hammers with a steady succession of blows on the top of the pile. They can be constructed from steel, timber, and precast concrete. They're classified as the 
displacement piles and gain substantial capacity by displacing the soil around the shaft and compacting the soil. Let's look at the pros. No spoil to be removed from site, can be used in aggressive soil conditions, speed of installation, and they are ideal in shallow water table zones. The cons, noisy and considerable vibration might damage adjacent properties, typically not suitable for rock. Timber piles might need treatment, especially if subjected to alternate wetting and drying, and their uplift capacity is limited if the pile cannot be driven deep enough into the ground. Next are the Frankie piles also known as enlarged base driven cast in situ piles and they are installed on site using a drop weight and temporary casing. In the Frankie piles construction process a dry concrete mix is compacted at the bottom of the casing using a drop hammer creating a driving plug. The temporary casing is then driven into the ground until the desired depth. Additional dry concrete mix is added and expelled to form the enlarged base. After forming the enlarged base, reinforcing steel and high slump concrete are placed in the casing and finally the casing is removed. Pros High bearing and uplift capacity due to the enlarged base. Ideal in shallow water table zones due to the casing. No spoil to be removed from site. And the cons limited depth of installation, noisy and considerable vibration, not suitable for rock. Next on the list are the micro piles. Micro piles are essentially mini board piles. Their diameter ranges from 50 to 300 millimeters and they are mainly used to strengthen existing footings. Initially, a steel casing is pressed into the soil to the required depth and a flushing method removes soil by introducing pressurized water. Concrete is then placed using the tremi method with the steel casing simultaneously extracted. Following this, a single centralized bar is typically plunged into the steel wet concrete. Pros can be installed in confined spaces, which makes them ideal for remedial works, minimal spoil to be removed from site, minimal noise and vibration, cones, not suitable for large loads. I remember back when I lived in Brazil, there was a social housing program called My House, My Life, and they built hundreds of brick houses on a low bearing capacity soil. Not long after the houses were built, the walls were all cracked due to differential sediment and they used micro piles to fix these houses. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, there is a special case you should be very careful when using piles. And that's when the site is situated above a closed landfill or hazardous waste sites. You should treat those sites with extreme caution as drilling the ground can expose hazardous materials to the surface, including gases that can be dangerous if inhaled, or even worse, the possibility of an explosion. There is also critical information about piles that you must understand, and I talk about them in this video here, so check that out and I'll see you there.